Welcome to the Larger Than Necessary First Player Token Podcast. This is episode 61. My name is Chris. I'm Ewan. I'm Dave. I'm Pavel. Oh, Dave, have you taken third spot now? It's um, fine, that's you okay. You've yourself above Pavel. Well, it just made it. sense to go in I'm order. You know. Fought along the couch. Ah, yeah. I mean, it's obviously not going to make sense to the listener, but... That's okay. After the, oh, Pavel. After the last uh, gaming podcast. I, mean, I was, yes. Oh, uh, yeah, you, you, you I did. was booted out. You put Pavel in his place, actually. You really <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't intentional. <laughs> you rode roughshod over it. It was well, brilliant. I'm trying to carry this cast with dignity, but it's not really happening. <laughs> so yes, uh, this is a video games episode, and in video, the last video games episode, in episode 59, uh, the last thing we talked about was... Uh, how un- much Dave hates video games. How much Dave hates video games, but more specifically we talked about Uncharted 4, well, but, well mostly about Tomb to Raider. Talk about Uncharted mostly 4. about Tomb Raider. Yeah. yeah so Pavel, you wanted to, uh, Hello, yeah. to give some love into that. Yes. Um, however... We kind of shat all over those plans. That did happen, yes. Uh, but what's happened? Like, we've, we've had a happy, uh, uh, so there's a happy outcome to this, and that we've got our first ever bit of fan mail uh, <clears throat> regarding this whole bit. So, Pavel, you're gonna uh, you're gonna read a letter as uh, as the introduction of the show. You're gonna read our first ever bit of fan mail. Reaching into the mailbag, Pavel. The sad yeah. truth is, I've essentially just botched it terribly. I've attempted to to review something that's obviously awesome. I've just failed and there's people out there our loyal listeners that just cannot stomach this fact but i think dave should do the honors because he's the one that annoyed this person clearly okay dave you're gonna gonna read read this out (laughs) dave's gonna read out criticism about himself this will be great (laughs) and we're gonna have to send them to a psychiatrist or something after this yeah i don't know see how brutal it is um, let's see what happens counseling for dave (laughs) okay Right, Dave, Uncharted 4 is the fourth game in Naughty Dog's Uncharted series. It was the first not to be made by Amy Hennig. Instead, it was under the direction of Bruce Straley and Neil Druckmann of The Last of Us fame. Well, I didn't know that. This is very influential to the game as it takes more a more grounded, as weird as that is for a game about treasure hunting, approach. The game is more story driven than the last three and it makes for a better game. If there is one thing Sony does better than Microsoft or Nintendo, it's hype. The hype and promotion for this game was so much that I was so excited for it, even annoying family and friends, it was almost like the game couldn't live up to the expectations, but it did. It was so good it made other games, <coughs> Rise of the Tomb Raider, <coughs> look a- just look amateurish. Ah, it's good that you, you followed the stage directions. <laughs> so my work colleague Pavel... Sorry. So my work colleague Pavel said, "Man, <laughs> he does see that a lot. <laughs> what? what the hell? Okay, wait a minute. Okay, continue, continue." Pavel said, "Man, what's with the brother? I want Elena and Sully. No, while shaking his fists, he had a point. Why would you make a new character of a long lost brother four games in? Why? Because he is played by played by Troy fucking Baker. That's why." Is it the genius of the actor or the magic of Naughty Dog? A bit of both. The chemistry between Troy Baker and Nolan North is unbelievable. The fact that they are old friends outside of acting brings the believable interactions between the characters. They play so well off of each other you believe the story being told to you. Add in the backstory of the Drake's younger lives and the hardships and misfortunes they went through, it really does bring the entire story to a nice close. Sully, Elena and the new villains Nadine and Adler fill out the cast and they all bring different qualities to the story. What was refreshing about the new antagonists were Nadine, the leader of the Shoreline essentially, well, the Shoreline, essentially an army for hire, and Adler, really just a rich boy wanting glory, is the fact that they are believable and somewhat relatable. Nadine is just doing a job and can kick ass, while Adler is the brains and money who wants to get the treasure before the famous Nathan Drake. There are no supernatural villains here, no transformations, just plain army dudes wanting to kill you. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 doing well. 
This is a departure from the outlandish villains from previous games, but really improves the game, as you're not taken out of the reality so much it becomes so apparent. Well done. Are. Well done, Dave. Well done. So that was actually a review. Yeah, yes. You've just ah. snuck in a proper review. on. Like, well, that's the thing. He, he pretty much just did what I failed to do. Yeah, just I was just going to say, he did a better job of it than you did. Absolutely, uh, yeah. So most of the criticism in this case has been directed at Pavel for having failed. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay. See, Pavel, what, what you should do next time is, if you want to get a review in, is write us a letter. Mm. <laughs> I'll, I'll, yes. Uh, please send us more letters. So Any who, games you enjoy, because you've done Uncharted 4... Um, well, a justice, whereas I've not. And so, uh, and and for, for having read verbatim copy, uh, does does Dave get any kind of like payment for that? Surely no, no, this, no. This isn't a Sony press release. This is a repayment just been, because just been because into reading out on our Dave's podcast. been slagging off Uncharted Four in well, the previous no. episode, so now he got to review it positively, which is the best possible revenge you can think of. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. So, who who does this come from? What's yeah. his name? Well, this is John. This John, is John. The, John the Hobbit. John the Hobbit. And what's his address? Uh, <laughs> I don't know, man. He's like from around just, here. Just asking for a friend. <laughs> well, he's Let's kicked go. open the mailbag. He has. Let's, he's kicked, let's, let's get the flood going. Uh, Fine. A few episodes more and I'll be saying my name the fifth and he'll be fourth. <laughs> I'll just I'll downgrade it. I don't know. There's, no, okay. there's no more space on that couch. You have three more couches, man. <laughs> Two. There's <laughs> lots of couches in here. Couch. Yeah, but there's only one podcasting couch, Pavel. Mm. All right. <clears throat> Listeners should know it's actually a struggle to move in our living room for couches. It's yeah. bizarre. <laughs> there, are, there are some excess of couches mm. in here. <laughs> Just a little bit of inside information for you there. Okay, so let's. Uh, that was a good introduction. Yes. Um, thanks for the letter slash review. Oh. Um, don't ever do that again. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and we'll get on with it now. So let's actually get on with a, with a proper, a, a proper review, which Pavel's now going to do, and we're going to try not to uh, shit all over it. Oh, I don't know. I really, really, really want to. <laughs> I feel like it's becoming a new tradition. <laughs> okay, Pavel, tell us about Destiny Two. Hello. There is a game called Destiny Two out there nowadays, and I may have been taking some days days off work to play it. Oh yeah, I noticed that actually. Hey. I noticed you were on that about half two yesterday, and I was like, uh, he's skiving. Uh, he's skiving. Yeah. Things like this may happen occasionally, yes. And Destiny seems to be one of those games, and I cannot fully uh, understand or explain why, but I will try. Because the same thing sort of happened with Destiny 1. I actually bought PS4 because of Destiny, or it felt like this that way uh, back then. Uh, but we shouldn't probably be talking about Destiny 1, because it's a lot of uh, stuff to process, and... Um, I'll try and just talk about uh, the sequel, which doesn't... It's it's a sequel story-wise, and I think the story word is crucial here. The biggest um, uh, the biggest problem with, with Destiny 1 was that there was no story at all there. Uh, it was a bare-bones game, and plenty of people complained about plenty of different things, but lack of storytelling of any kind, any relatable characters, and so on, was probably present in most of the uh, reviews um, and Bungie attempted to uh, well do better than that uh, over the years and Destiny well it was sort of growing um, with every single DLC that people were paying money for uh, <clears throat> and then they came up with Destiny 2. Destiny 2 is essentially um, Story-wise, direct sequel. If you've been trying to save, uh, I suppose, solar system uh, from various different alien factions, and there is more alien factions coming over uh, to kick you even harder, so that you have to kick back. Um, and I suppose I should also mention that Destiny Two is a as an online multiplayer, mostly multiplayer, um, fast-person shooter set in a uh, well fairly odd science fiction uh, setting. Uh, can we you call mean it science poorly fiction? written science fiction setting? Well, it used, <laughs> I'm going to say the, the thing with Destiny... Poorly thought that out I, world and that, kind of very bland ideas, you mean? Um, what kept me in... You're really going for this year, Previously, well, I could... I could... <laughs> I could sense something. I, I can sense it, more though. fan mail. <laughs> I'm trying to. Re- you got to say controversial stuff to wind up the fans, and then they send in the mail. Uncharted 
What? <laughs> De- Destiny? <laughs> <laughs> We've just given him PTSD. Oh, oh no. no, no, my scar. My scar is, is just hurting again. Oh. Destiny 2 is telling its story much better. Okay. All the... Oh, well, I'm going to say all the characters that you sort of land in the, uh, in the first game, land their names and maybe how they look, uh, and, but nothing more than that, because they weren't even characters. They were just... You know, uh, I suppose models in the game that maybe gave you some quests, but other than that, oh, right. they weren't written as such. First thing, I mean, I didn't play a, a huge amount of Destiny, but I, I don't encounter recall encountering any actual yeah like so characters. That... Destiny Two, you've got uh, you've got actual characters with personalities. You've got plenty of cutscenes. You've got storytelling. They still just quest givers, if you know what I mean. But um, the world feels much more fleshed out. The factions are introduced with added layers of both mystery and explanations. And because if this is not a, your straightforward science fiction, but rather a strange mixture with its own uh, unique, I would say, style. Everything in Destiny is sort of ornate, and it's it's like a mixture of whatever medieval paladin fantasy with with your, I don't know, space fairing. <clears throat> but yeah, sorry, other than that, same game. Um, right. You just grind for better weapons, uh, level up your character, um, <laughs> and and shoot various aliens in, you know, in uh, a lot of missions. There's a lot, there's way more con- content uh, than Good there ever content. was in the original Destiny 1. Um, Does it feel like there's more variety in the missions, or... There's always something to do. This is the addictive uh, part, and they've made it, I'm going to say, more addictive and more um, um, uh, streamlined because you spend much less time in the, I should say, the lobby uh, as as such, choosing which mission to go for. Instead, Mm. most of the time you're essentially in the semi-open world where you can can pick up various quests, missions, you name it, Meet up with friends and run around the, the 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 planet. When I say semi-open, they essentially it's like it's like a, a string of uh, arenas, I should say, with various spawn points and the like. Just like in the first game. So it's it's still set on the sort of ruined earth, basically, or the all the well, yes, it's still the solar system as such, whatever. but it's not Russia now. It's I think it's some sort of German town, and it's not going to be Mars, Venus, and and whatsoever, but rather. Some yeah. smaller planets here and there, uh, but the, the premise is the same. You're still attempting to defend the solar system from the same forces who have changed. You would expect from a sequel uh, additional enemies, additional uh, varieties in them, and they have, they have added enough, I think, to keep it fresh. Um, have they made the kind of situations and the whole motivation of the whole thing a bit clearer? Because honestly, I could not tell you what the premise of Destiny was. As I was saying earlier, the same thing with the division. I honestly, people have explained it to me. I go, what is what is what does any of this mean? Um, In Destiny, you, you, if I try and recap what I remember of it, so humans found something, <laughs> uh, and then aliens turned up and fucked everyone up, and then you're a corpse that gets resurrected by a box, <laughs> and then you just go about shooting a bunch of stuff for no <clears throat> apparent reason. Right. Uh, if, if you humour me by assuming that sometimes storytelling doesn't have to be very descriptive, mm. if you try to look under the very thin layers in Destiny 1, you'll see the lights written with capital A, L, being the main sort of deity slash whatever power that fuels uh, guardians, guardians being immortal, always respawning, essentially, yeah. fighters that were chosen by agents of the Traveller, Traveller being the deity, uh, the source of light. I uh, think that's the stuff when that the, was... When the travel died, it, I suppose, exuded ghosts, which are tiny little, not really robotic creatures, but rather bits of living light that are using... Uh, robotic shells to just fly around and search out the guardians uh match up with them and keep uh, advising them and resurrecting them if need be and just make sure that the guardian is doing what they're supposed to be doing which is defending i suppose the traveler and the traveler is chosen humanity for some reason 
Uh, you don't learn a lot about... For some reason. Well, <laughs> you know what? Yes, there's going to be actual villains trying to in Destiny 2, trying to understand why the Traveler's chosen the way it's chosen and what do you have to do to be chosen, things like this. Yeah. Way more added to the mythology in this game in Destiny 2. It does just seem like they've kind of just... The original Destiny... Was, let's just give a very basic narrative structure to what an MMO is. And just make it that, but if yeah, if you if you go a bit deeper into it, so it could be interesting. Destiny, but it just felt so. Destiny One almost had none of it yeah. because there was no. You could learn more about the four uh, alien factions that were encroaching on Earth from I don't know the website rather than within the game, you know. Yeah. Uh, whereas in here, uh, every mission will have some some additional um, bits of info about uh, about various factions about villains' motivations, um, or about what you've gone through. More importantly, uh, there's at least half, I think about half, half a dozen sort of main characters um, that have resonated with players over the past two years of Destiny 2, or three years, is it, of Destiny being there, Destiny 1. Uh, but in Destiny 2, they finally get fleshed out correctly, and, and there's lots of it. And you, you do care for them, and you have you know, uh, fun interacting with them. I'm, I'm going to say that Destiny 2 is definitely what Destiny 1 should, should have been, but it's also a game that builds on some of the strengths of Destiny 1, Destiny 1. So in many areas, you'll see almost no differences at all because this is what players expect, uh, some of the missions being for solo players, some of the missions being for three, three players, a uh, certain level of uh, replayability, bigger raids, lots and lots of grinding, things like this. Um, I don't know, it's it's addictive, man. I've, I've, what it's, what, it's is, it what is it that makes it... What is it that makes it addictive? It's a special chemical like, developed every, by Blizzard. <clears throat> that you, uh... um, I think it's, to, for me, it's the sense of... Because I, I suppose I play RPGs quite often. I get my own character so long as I can move around in a, a shared universe... Uh, look out for, for quests, I'm happy. But you don't get um, MMORPGs that have shooting elements as well done as in shooting games. Destiny from the beginning was sort of trying to imitate it. Mm-hmm. Um, and with Destiny 2, it's, it's I suppose, done better. Um, so is it I mean, what is it that you look forward to when you play the game? I'm just because I've not played either of them. So I'm yeah, just you always to get need the motivation to, uh, to... when you when you uh, I like if if I play shooters, I need I need some sort of uh, theme and science fiction theme, as yes, my my first choice. I'm gonna say that uh, visuals in Destiny are always stunning. Some of the factions and uh, I'm gonna say settings in which you can expect to find these factions are absolutely jaw-dropping, whereas the, the, the sort of robotic time warping, very, very vexing uh, faction called the Vex, um, you, can, you can find in areas uh, straight out of Star Trek with very asymmetric, uh, geometric uh, architecture, or you're going to get your uh, sort of morbid corpse-like um, hive uh, running around, they, they're always going to be in, in various underground, dark, uh, cavern-like dwellings with all sorts of worms and maggots and the like. Uh, it sounds basic, but it's really well well done mm. and really well polished uh, design-wise. Um, every game like this needs a lot of tiny uh, fine-tuning in order to, to make all these types of enemies both challenging and and diverse and i think destiny has <clears> gone a long way to 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 do so um so to me those missions don't feel repetitive quite a lot of them may uh, may be based on the same principle but there's plenty of variety to them i suppose the the repetitive factor comes from you playing the, exactly the same mission for 20 times this is when things become a bit stale well see i, I saw a lot of that in destiny but then that is that kind of a feature of MMORPGs? When you get to a certain level, it is just well, exactly. The the, the end game of any game stuff. is always uh, about repetition. When you play, I don't know, World of Warcraft, that 
probably has more content than another 200 games combined, mm. uh, you're still going to eventually end up somewhere on top of your character pro- level progression doing the same raid twice a week for a year, uh, which sounds scary. Um, I've never really gone that far in Destiny. I've played a couple of raids, but for me it's all about the, the semi-open worlds, just running around there, picking up various things, picking up loot, and things like this. Uh, see, this is why I couldn't get into... It's, it's exactly what you were saying, um, Ewan. Like, this is why I couldn't get into like these sort of MMO things. And it's the same. it was the same with World of Warcraft. It was the same with, like... Well, any other MMO I've played, basically. I've played Destiny. Um, I played The Division. Um, and it was always, I got to a point where you kind of got to the end point where you'd kind of done all the sort of, mm. you know, and Destiny, all the strikes or whatever. And then in The Division, it was all the, the sort of main level things, all the sort of main mission things and stuff. And World of Warcraft is once you got to that top level, where, well, it was 60 when I played it. Uh, it was that long ago. But um, once I got to that point, I couldn't be bothered anymore. And I fully agree. And you know what? In most games, I, I'm I'm the same. If I'm if I'm done with a solo or a single player campaign, I usually just uh, put the game away. A five. I've been the the latest uh, MMO RPG I played was Elder Scrolls Online, uh, and I've gone through the entire uh, sort of campaign. Uh, once once you've done that, you can keep exploring the world. But I was done with the game. I might just go back to it at some point in destiny you can do the same thing you can go through the whole campaign and it will give you uh, enough uh storyline to fill i think 15 hours or so yeah which is which is what you would expect from a single player game so you get your money's worth i suppose from from just the campaign especially because right now it's not just a collection of uh bare bone missions but there is as i said there is actual um uh, well lore in it <laughs> there is actual um storytelling i should say yeah yeah and then you can just continue playing uh which is what seems to be at the moment i can say almost an endless amount of side missions and various other tasks and challenges i think this is a game and destiny one was doing it as well uh striving to give you as much to do as possible it's just destiny one used to do it mainly in a multiplayer environment whereas destiny 2 will does have already and will have even more content for groups of players but there's a shitload to do for a solo player which mostly is essentially just shooting but because it's a it's a nice um mechanic of both shooting guns and doing i suppose magic with your you know guardian character it's just it's it's good fun so you're having fun then? I'm having way more fun than I should probably with a game like this because I don't play first-person shooters, yeah. but I do play Destinies. Uh, uh, Ewan, you're never going to play it. <laughs> probably not. I've had to deal with their adverts too much. That advert recently. is really annoying. It is. Well, because they basically what they've done is is very obvious. They've gone, oh, there Deadpool we go. Popular. There we go. Let's yeah. rip off a character. But they said, Pavel, I mean, you know, they could put no, more narrative elements. A derivative character is better than no characters at all. So... <laughs> That's what we've learned from Destiny. You know, all Cade... I don't know, like... (laughs) It's like, I would be sceptical about that, but Pavel's saying the second game's better, so that proves... Destiny is very pathetic, very... um, The the whole mood in it is very, uh, I suppose, serious, or trying to be serious. What was popular when Destiny first came out? Borat? No, no, no. That was that was. Uh, what? Oh, that was well before that. Oh, I so they, they wouldn't have thought to put. Up. Well, I suppose they stuck the bloke out of Game of Thrones in it. That was the ah, Game of Thrones would have been a, would have been kicking off. I think. Yeah. Yes, and that's why the original voice of the Ghost, got... which was the aye. the wee light, was Peter, Peter Dinklage. Yes, that's yeah. right. Aye, and nice. then they've, they've changed the voice to no one. They needed to add in like a surly northerner human character as well to kind of really complete the oh, feeling. Just like... get Sean Bean in there. Aye. Yeah. <laughs> Just to kind of moan about stuff. <laughs> but be honourable while he's moaning. Oh, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. In a very honourable way. I don't know. So far, I'm not I'm not seeing a lot of shitting. I, I think I've, I've, I've done a review here, and you guys are just... <laughs> hey, I've, I've been I'm very quiet. I've yeah. been very quiet. Let you say your piece. I mean, the thing thank is, you. Thank I, you very much. 
I mean, I, I was very tempted to get Destiny 2, I'll be honest. Um, and mainly because I, I got the, I played the beta thing, or the, which was like we just discussed before we started this. It was basically a demo. Um, and I was actually quite impressed with it. Like, I, I was like, oh yeah, like getting back into that sort of Destiny feel of things and stuff. And, and like, it kind of ends in this sort of boss fight. But then, like I said to you, my whole team quit. So Apart from a couple of MMORPGs and Wild 8, Destiny is probably the only game I ever really played online. Well, maybe maybe Star Wars Battlefront, that's it. Mm. I always play solo. But in Destiny, I do team up with people and shoot stuff. <laughs> Well, it's got to have something going for it if it's going to make you actually talk to people. So. No, 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 no. You don't talk to people. No, absolutely right. yeah, not. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Sorry, no. I went too far there. Oh, right. Okay. You just go and shoot the thing you're supposed to. My mic is always off. Oh. Right, Pavel's enjoying Destiny 2. Time Thank to you. move on. So that's uh, Destiny 2. It's like Bungie and Activision. Um, that came out in September the 6th on PS4 and Xbox One. And the Windows version is not out until next month. I End so, of next yes. month. Yeah. October the 24th. Was that, did that happen with the original Destiny? Was that a... Uh, consoles I'm, first and then... Yeah, see, I can't remember. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it, it used to be sort of semi-PS4 only thing. No. Xbox maybe a couple of days later, something like this. I might just be imagining things. Okay, right. Well, we're going to uh, move on now. Um, the, one of the reasons why I was kind of quiet there was because I was, just re- get, I was starting to get quite worried about what I'm actually going to say about this next game because I don't know where to start with Fortnite. <laughs> so, uh, Fortnite is a game that we're going to need three episodes to talk I just, about. Like, I, Go for it. It's th- This game, right, and, and this is the way that I've been describing it to people, this feels like somebody started making a free-to-play mobile game and the whole thing just got completely out of hand. Like, there were just people sitting around the table saying, like, okay, this is, you know what would be good if we just had a mobile game where you sort of collected some collected some like schematics and you could make little things and you could use XP to level those things up and then somebody went, what if we made it a third-person shooter? Right. <laughs> you know? and, and that's kind of like... And then, like Does it somebody fit else together, went, oh, well, well, if we're making it a third-person shooter, we might as well make it tower defence. <laughs> You know, and then somebody else has gone. Well, let's put some well tower defense. Well, let them make their own towers. Then, you know, <laughs> let them scavenge for their own materials. You know, let them uh, manage a whole group of survivors. Uh, let's make it multiplayer. Like that's that's basically like what's happened here. This is the feeling I get right. from it. This game has just got so many things going on in it that it's. It, I I, just, I couldn't really get my head round. It took me weeks to get my head round that. Right. It just sort of turning it on once every few days in that sort of like reluctant kind of way. Like, am I going to play this? Yeah, I'm going to play this. It's been interesting watching you go like go through the process, like because you did you first got it and you were really sceptical about it. I was really sceptical. Well, the word special because I paid I paid fifty quid for it as well. Oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Exclamation well, marks! The words, I mean, uh, so the words free to play generally do you know fill you with dread? Yeah. Uh, but none of that stuff seems to have been borne out about it. It's it's right. I, I've I'm I'm enjoying it now. Ah. okay. I will say that it did take me a while to get into it, but now that I've kind of got into it, I'm enjoying it. And another one of the other reasons I'm enjoying it is because of what they did to it in the last couple of days. But we'll get to that later. Right. Okay. <laughs> but uh, so let's just talk about the actual what Fortnite itself is. So good luck. The, the idea here, okay, is that there is a story, and it's to do with like basically most of the population of the world has somehow disappeared and this storm thing has turned up. And this storm thing is basically just zombies. It's just big purple clouds Sharknado. and then zombies come out of it. Mm. And there's all different kinds of zombies. There's, you just got your normal sort of zombies. They're not like shambling Romero zombies. They're like um, sort of fast-moving zombies that'll run at you. Not sprint, but they're coming at you at a decent a decent pelt, I would say. But then you get the usual fat zombies. You get I've the seen baseball throwing zombies. Base, uh, yeah, baseball throwing zombies. Um, they're actually throwing bones, but they're dressed up like baseball players. All right. Um, there's uh, screaming banshee zombies that are throwing big balls of flame up in the air. Um, all those kind of things. So yes, th- these things have turned up on Earth. Are we assuming those are the actual humans that disappeared? Well, we don't know. So I I've think not, we should. I, I don't know if they're even going to resolve this story. <laughs> like, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> I just it's, feel like it's an excuse to just make this game. Right? It's a relatively light-hearted <laughs> setup in the game. Like. Yeah, but the thing is, they've still got like as you go through the game, you're you're doing sort of missions, and I've tried to explain this to Pavel. You have missions and you have quests. Right, yeah. <laughs> there's, there's, actually, there are different things in this game so your mission is your actual main story mission and your quests are just anything else that you're doing you get side quests I've got like that list of quests I've got Pavel how big is it? Ridiculous. scary big yeah there's just so much shit going on there Um, 
I mean, think Witcher amount of stuff to do and then just add on top of it. Yeah. But, I mean, what actually happens when you're playing this game, like I say, this is a third-person shooter at its core. That's really what it is. But it just... You, you can build fortresses and stuff like that. Um, it's kind of very simple in the way you do it. It's nothing like, you know, Seven Days to Die or anything like that. There's no sort of complicated uh, building up of fortresses. It's very simple. You can make floors and walls and ceilings and stairs. Um, you can edit those t- t- slightly, so you can make like very small walls, or you can make stairs that are like that go up in a spiral. Can you um, make roofs? Cause... You can make roofs, yeah. Yeah. You can make roofs. Uh, generally, if you want to make a flat roof, it's just you just put floors down. But you can make sloped roofs as All well. Right. Um, so yeah, when you're playing the game, you'll you'll, you'll may have a different que- you'll have a different quest depending on which one you pick. Um, you've got a map thing basically that tells you what the different quests are that are available, and there are things like you know um, fight the storm, which is basically like you know go down there. You've got to put some um, MacGuffin down on the ground somewhere and then protect it. Uh, fight the storm. That that that's like the the dudes down south in in the states who are shooting at at Hurricane Irma. Yes. <laughs> well, watching the bullets come flying back yeah. at them. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. <laughs> It's something like that, aye. Mm. So basically, yeah, you'll go down um, and you're just you're in an, an area and it depends on where you've packed. It could be a sort of urban area, so there could be buildings and cars and roads and stuff like that. Um, or it could be like out in the trees, into a forest or something. Um, and you will run around with a pickaxe and smash things down, smash down some trees, smash down rocks, smash up the cars, because those are the three sort of main sources of your materials because the materials are wood, brick and metal. Um, so yeah, for trees for wood, stone for uh, bricks, and uh, you harvest cars if you want some metal. And there are like, you can smash up the walls if you want some brick and stuff like that. Everything and if there are metal walls, you can smash up everything. Yeah. In this, everything in this game, you can smash it all up. Uh, and you will, if you're fighting the storm, say you've got to put this thing down, and then you you build a fortress around it, and then you activate the thing in the middle, and then you'll just get waves of zombies coming at you, and you have to defend it. Um, you can play it single player and you can like do various things in the game that give you like defenders that are AI controlled and they can help you defend these things. Or but the game is kind of designed for multiplayer, I would say. Especially once you get into those later levels, you're not gonna be able to defend things on your own um without other people. So I've only really scratched the surface there of what the game is, but that's the essence of the game really. This is really what you're doing. Now you, you do get different quests where you don't have to build things and protect things it might just be rescue survivors so there might be people out in the towns and stuff like that and you have to just run around finding them and then rescuing them Um, some of them give you other things to do before they'll come with you and all that so all that you've said so far actually takes place within I suppose the third uh, person shooter that's the third person shooter aspect of the game which is what sort of percentage of the actual gameplay Uh, probably about 25 yeah and the the rest of it is menus yeah so the rest of the game is really just like going through menus because like what we're saying like I've paid 50 quid for this game but that's just to get and that's that's early access okay right so that's to get early access to this because this game's going to go free to play in 2018 and when it goes free to play um it's going to be that free-to-play model where you have to pay money in order to get all this other stuff if you want it. But, I mean, get paying that 50 quid, you get a whole load of stuff for it. And at first I was very confused about what I'd actually got because it just seemed like, oh, you've given me all this stuff, but I can't even need all this stuff. And is this stuff even good? I don't even know. It took me a while to get to grips with what was what in this game. So the way that you get stuff in this game, and I'm talking about in terms of equipment and even the heroes that you play as um, and various other things like there are survivors that you can form into squads and those squads give you bonuses they don't actually do anything but they just give you bonuses to your stats because yeah there are RPG elements in this game as well uh, Wait. <laughs> this, this is, yeah, I was just worried that this talking about this game I was just going to just keep building new things on top of what I'm talking about you are yes and that's exactly what I'm doing this is why I was worried it's just because it's just this game is so much when you're playing it like this, this is getting out of hand what else are you going to add on to this <laughs> but yeah so as i was saying what you actually get is schematics you don't get the items uh in this now you, i mean i'm saying that you can find items when you're out yeah. running about but they tend to be very shit they're tend to be just very low level things you might find some traps and stuff like that anyway um you find schematics and the schematics are the things that you can level up 
So you can level up your schematic. So let's say you get a sniper rifle. Okay, so you can level up the schematic for that sniper rifle to give it extra damage. But then every sort of five levels that you add to it, it gets a bonus thing as well. So you can see what those bonuses are. And if you get multiple copies of the same schematic, you can decide which one you're going to keep and level up. Um, and then you can recycle the rest of them to get XP. You can also, with uh, duplicate things that you have, you've got a collection book in this game where you can stick things in the collection book. It's like a sticker book, like a Panini sticker album. <laughs> so you just stick your schematics in your sticker book. That's what me and uh, me and my friends have been calling it when we've been playing this game. It's like, oh yeah, I'm just going to put some stuff in my sticker book. Yep. Uh, <laughs> So yeah, you get these schematics, uh, you can level those up, you get heroes as well, um, you can level those up, so these are the characters that you play as, there are different classes, so you've got ninjas, you've got soldiers, you've got constructors, you've got outlanders, uh, I think that might be it, I think it's just the mm, four, Yeah. but within each of those things there are different subclasses, so you might get ninjas that are fleet foot, um, you might get um, constructors that are plasma specialists, uh, these different kind of things and it's really that just tells you what their abilities are when you level them up when you get to certain points in their evolution basically and um, what sort of abilities they're going to get uh so like your fleet foot ninja is probably going to get more speed based sort of skills than your uh, the brawler ninja that i use which is much more about just running and beating the shit out of people um she's amazing by the way i love that i love her uh, <laughs> there we go <laughs> but um so yeah, all these things, let's see, you level those up um, to get better s stuff. Now, the stuff that you get comes out of llamas. I'm just going to let that sentence hang for a bit. The llamas hang too. They are llamas. Yeah, they're llamas. So they they're, like, uh, they're like piñatas, basically. Llama piñatas. Yeah, llama piñatas. Pini, pini so when you pay, you, when you pay for your, your 50 quid for the early access to this, what you actually get is a whole bunch of llamas to break open. Right. So you smash these llamas open. So this is the mobile phone game this is the aspect. This, is, the, this the, is what feels like the mobile phone the, game aspect of it. That's the gacha yeah. mechanism. Yeah. Uh, exactly. Uh, I've played a few mobile phone games and they all have a hard currency that you pay for, which yes. may do a number of things, but one of the things it does is let you pull the lever on the machine and you get out in this case is it schematics and characters schematics. and sometimes you've got them already but you can salvage them yes and it's join exactly them together that. merge them make them do new things yeah this but is... there's also you can actually play the <laughs> you can actually play the game as well and that's what i mean that. this is this is exactly what i mean when i say this feels like a mobile phone game that got out of hand uh. like <laughs> um so yeah, you can when you smash these llamas open, you'll get various things, as Dave is saying. Some of the things you get is just the XP for the various things. Now, there's like different types of XP as well. So you get schematic XP, and you get hero XP, and you get survivor XP. So they're for leveling up with different things. You also need different items for leveling people up to certain levels. Like I said, there is so much stuff. I could sit here for 20 minutes trying to tell you about everything that's in this game. Yeah. And another 20 minutes, I'm saying, not just 20 minutes of talking. It does seem to be a, like a feature of the kind of like free-to-play games, so like having this kind of smorgasbord of like all sorts of stuff you can do, because like even when you're at your limit for... You know, a lot of these things have like, oh, this takes a certain amount of time to do. And so yeah. There's always like something that will keep you coming back and might where you and the longer you're logged into the game the more chance you are of spending pointless money on it that sort of thing no oh, that's it aye there's, there's like a, <coughs> uh, the, so the, the end game currency is called V-Bucks um, and you can get like you can get V-Bucks by doing different quests or different uh, missions in the map and stuff like that uh uh, you can also buy it though so yeah. that's like you know that free to play thing where you and then the more money you spend the better value you get you know that kind of ah, thing so of course, you, can, yeah, you can spend 80 quid on V-Bucks if you want yeah. and get shitloads of them so but that you can you open loads me? and loads and loads of llamas because you did um, show me that and it was like kind of was like the exchange on that is no actually that great compared to just playing the game yeah I mean you, can, you well, can't just sit and play the game and play the missions and get some yeah. V-Bucks but I mean um, your daily quests are your main source of V-Bucks obviously and you can have up to three daily quests at a time and once you do one I think you have to wait 24 hours before you get in the next one mm -hmm. um, I think once a day you can bin one and get another one um, but like that's it you can only do it once a day um, now that's the sort of main so like the V-Bucks are like I say where you get your where you can open your llamas from and that's the draw for this game that's what keeps you coming back it's what am I going to get in the next llama right. you know um, am I going to get that because 
like all the items and the heroes and this uh, the schematics and all that they're all split into the, the classic you know the grey ones are crap the green ones are rare the blue ones are um, better epic, than green you know, with, uh, the purple ones are <laughs> Even better more than epic. blue yeah and then the orange ones are the legendary 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 it's always orange um, yeah orange is the colour these days in gaming by the way that's the I wonder what actually started this particular uh, the colour scheme yeah I wonder which, which game did that oh, no, first I know that where the work of had the highest mm. ranks that was orange yeah, yeah. Was that, it, is that and true? the set down yeah, yeah. from that was purple I'm almost certain that was the case that is true yes. I might be you asking a long time since I played it you'd have to check Fantasy Star to see if they did it because Fantasy Star, I don't have uh, it. I don't Fantasy have Star started the uh, green, blue, blue the, no, no, no. Fantasy Star started the color loot, coding, the loot thing. No, I'm saying you'd have to check to see if they, ah. if they did the color coding for the rare. We're now discussing an amount of research that we're clearly not going to uh, follow up on. No, um, it's a, it's a sort of weird. Of course we will. Uh, Pavel's <laughs> going to do it right now. Oh God. Um. So yeah, I, like I say, you're coming back and you're. You're just wanting to see what legendaries you might get. Now, by the way, when you go to open your llamas, there's a, there's a little animation thing. You just basically press X to hit it with whatever weapon you've been given to hit the llama with. Sometimes it's like a broom. Sometimes it's a sword. You know, it's a golf club or something like that. Um, and sometimes you hit the llama, it turns silver, which means you're going to get better loot out of it. But sometimes you hit the silver one, it sometimes turns gold. And you get even better loot out of it. That's and there crazy. are also yeah crazy shit man there are also uh, limited time things as well so there's limited time llamas that you can get so you can save all your V-Bucks up and get one of these limited time llamas and you're pretty much guaranteed to get something at least decent out of it not you know like a bunch of grey and green items you'll probably get at least a purple thing or a couple of purple things and an orange or something um, so yeah like I say that's the main draw for this game I think for most people is just coming back and seeing what you're going to get in your next llama. Having said that, the actual third-person shooter part yet, the actual, like, crafting stuff, the tower defence, the fighting off these waves of zombies, the doing the different quests, and there's a decent amount of variation in them as well. It's not just all you know, the same shitty tower defence things over and over again. The, um, the, yeah, there's the variation in that that's there is pretty good, and, uh, I mean, that part of the game on its own is pretty strong. Yeah. Like for a third person shooter and everything. And especially like because of the variety of the weapons and the schematics and all that. There are so many like weird weapons in this game. Like I am basically using a legendary sniper rifle, which is basically a shotgun. It's a shotgun sniper rifle. <laughs> so it's just got a really narrow like burst thing that goes really far. <laughs> <laughs> and you yeah. can just headshot people <laughs> like from miles Take away with a shotgun it. basically. <laughs> it is classed as a sniper rifle though. That's uh, I've also got a, a pneumatic hammer. Um, if anybody wants to go with that, it's great fun. <laughs> I'll, ma- I'll make you one if you want to play it. That's another good thing about this. If you get legendary items and the schematics, you can make one and just drop it on the ground, and somebody else can have it. Oh, that's you know, the, uh, so if you're playing multiplayer with somebody and they're, they, you know, you've got good weapons to share out, and you might as well share them, let people have them. It does sound um, like it's going to be really good fun uh, when you play it in multiplayer. Well, like what you said about you know the you know that third person. I'd- what you know, what I've seen of it, it's, like, it's very smooth. Oh, you know, it looks good. There's no clunkiness to the control or the, like the graphics yeah. or anything like that. Aye, it's, aye. It's, it's, I mean, it's not like amazing graphics. Right? It's just what it is, and it works really well. Yeah, and it's fun. Aye, it's got it's a sort of like cartoony kind of quality, to yeah, it. Yeah, it's yeah. to it. cartoony yeah. graphics and everything. Aye, yeah. but I mean, it does look good. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. And now, like you and says, it does. It plays well. It's not like it. Aye, it's not clunky or anything. That's interesting um, because there's like a wealth of these modern free-to-play style games that work in very similar ways but i think what most of them have in common is eventually the actual game part of it becomes rather boring yeah it gets tedious uh whereas this one sounds a little bit different yeah uh, whereas the game part is sort of okay it's like fun well it's actually the, pretty good the, yeah the tower defense uh mission that i've seen you play looked pretty intense yeah i'd play that i was definitely. playing that on my own as well yeah that was like that that, that tower defense in particular went went pretty badly but I don't know you succeeded I, I succeeded you were a couple but seconds I was, away from I was, yeah I was panicking towards the end yeah <laughs> um, there's one other thing I'm going to say right? one of the weirder aspects of this game is because you have all that sort of scavenging and um, and you have to go into a mission when you play the game okay and if, you're put, if you've got it on public so if you've got your privacy thing set to public it'll automatically match you up with other people that are doing that mission okay, okay? and one of the weird things is that even though you go in, you might have people that are in there that are just there to get uh, supplies 
they're just running about like picking up like smashing up cars and to get the metal and then getting the wood and stuff and then they'll bugger off like they'll just quit the game because they've got what they wanted so if you're there to do the mission they're just there to pick up some crap uh, you could maybe. be left to do a tower defence thing on your own <laughs> cute <laughs> that and that, that, you know, that can be pretty bad now apparently that's very much a low level thing so like people that are playing at higher levels will tend not to do that at those higher harder missions yeah um, this is what I've been told because I'm not I'm not anywhere near far through this game compared to a lot of other people I know that have been playing it so are you um, guilty of doing this so, yourself um, no, but but the thing is, I have done, but I've I said well, uh, I quite quickly realised that you could set it to private, so you can just go into a mission on your own, huh. and uh, and if you're only going in for resources, you might as well do that. Well, no point ruining somebody else's game. Yeah. So your three, your building resources, your metal, wood, and all that sort of stuff. Do they that carries across all the whole? You know, so you yeah. go into a mission, you you just have like a single. You have a single Bank stack of, of it, yeah. And so it, you it can just, have quite a lot of that. Well, the maximum is 999. Ah, so there's, okay. like, there's a limit to it. Um, now, when you build a wall, if you're building as anybody that isn't a constructor, they, the constructors get a, a, slightly less. Um, it costs you 10 of any resource to build. Like, so you build a brick wall, it costs you 10 brick. Okay. Um, if you upgrade that brick wall, it costs 20. If you upgrade uh, again, it will cost 30. So that's 60 brick just to make a fully upgraded brick wall. And considering if you want to completely surround you know, a, a thing. Right. Um and a sort of small smallish box it's maybe gonna be three by three. So you're talking about like uh what, twelve brick walls yeah. fully upgraded, you know, that's like getting close to eight hundred brick. So just just to build a like fully upgraded walls around something and can, and the maximum amount you can hold is nine hundred and eighty nine. So if you do that, <laughs> you're all, you're straight away gonna have to go away and try and find some right. more bricks. So there's always gonna so be there's a, a lot there is a lot of running around just picking up resources in this game. Right. Like there is a lot of it. Uh and that's one of the sort of more bits that makes you want to kind of fall asleep at times. But Aye, um, see that being a bit annoying. But yeah, that's that's one for the the people that like to hoard stuff. I think that just like to run around scavenging and stuff. Just want a big bag of wood. So that on its own is a game that I'm I'm enjoying. <laughs> okay, um, and it's it's got a hell of a lot going on for it. Um, now the past couple of days they've added a new mode to the game, so it's completely separate from the actual main game. And what they added in was uh, a battle royale mode, and it is basically identical to Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. Like, and so much, like, it's got everything, <laughs> even down to the wobby thing that the system that they use in it. So, if you don't know what that is, it's basically it's a hundred people parachuted onto an island. They have nothing. You have to run around picking up weapons, and uh, then it's the last man standing. And the whole time, the area that you're allowed to be in the island is shrinking. So that eventually everybody gets forced into one small area and has to kill each other. Uh, that's that's the quick version of what battlegrounds and battle royale thing is. So are we smelling a lawsuit? Because that sounds very similar. I mean, it's crazy how similar it is. I mean, other than the cartoony graphics, because obviously, like battlegrounds is much more sort of gritty, realistic, and I mean, it's still slightly silly. Hmm. But uh, so, like, well, it's like the battle royale film is just silly yeah, as yeah. well. But yeah, even like down to the fact that the lobby thing, you're just kind of everybody that's there that's just running around just not being able to hurt each other there's weapons lying about you can shoot each other you can't do anything mm. then when the game actually starts I mean in, in Battlegrounds you're in a plane um, and you're coming across this island you can parachute out any time in this in this Battle Royale mode in Fortnite you're uh, you're in a sort of flying bus it's like a blimp bus <laughs> um, and you can jump out any time and just basically parachute down to the ground uh, and it's just ah, it's the same it's just an island that's full of buildings that have got guns and stuff in it and the only big difference between that uh, this version and battlegrounds is the fact that you can still construct walls and stairways and all that sort of thing which you and you did to uh, <laughs> to great effect the other night there <laughs> when you played it so yeah you can still do that um now the thing is that i like battlegrounds all right now battlegrounds is still better for me but the problem with Battlegrounds that I have is that it runs like shit on my computer. Like, it's really bad. Yeah. It's like, I'm, I mean, I'm lucky if I can get 30 frames a second out of it. Um, so I'm just feeling much more like if I want to play it, I'll just turn this, this on and play the Fortnite version of it. Right. Um, it scratches the same itch. You still get that same tense sort of feeling of, um, you know, it's every man for themselves. Yeah. And you feel like you're completely naked when you start the game because you've got nothing. Um and you still get to do the my favourite manoeuvre, which I, I took a video of the other night, which is hiding in a bathroom and waiting for somebody to open the door so that you can just blast them with a shotgun. 
Uh, it's the, that method is just as effective in this. <laughs> Great. <laughs> I think that method is, in general, effective. Yeah. You should just stick to it. So, yeah, um, the Battle Royale mode is really good so far. Uh, Fortnite itself, the actual main game of it, really good. Well, I'm getting more and more impressed by it. When you say they co- completely separate, does it mean that... Uh, I don't know, your character Nothing carries levels. over. Nothing, Nothing okay, carries over. You. It, it's, you start off as a completely random character and there's no levels or mm. nothing like that at all. It's just you. everybody starts in the same the same level, basically. Mm. Right. Um, and nobody has any weapons or anything. So, uh, aye. So, yeah, two completely different game modes, but uh, they're both really good. They're both really well done. Um, the, the game's kind of charming in its own sort of cartoony way. Yeah. Um, I enjoy it. And Pavel, do you still think about picking this up? Yes, the only part that is raising a question mark for me is um, I've, I've watched you play it and I'm going to say that uh, apart from all the menus which looked horrifying and and uh, it does probably require quite a lot of commitment to, to actually learn this game as you said um, but within the, the actual gameplay part uh, well, it looked like 75% of your time was uh, just swinging your, your pickaxe. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I'm, I'm wondering whether this... I, I quite like I mean, hoarding, I must say. When I play Skyrim or Witcher, I'm all about picking up well, herbs all the time. Sorry, can I just jump in? Because yeah. when, you, when, you when you were watching me play at that time, when I was streaming at that time, um, I was that was my main purpose and that was just to run around and pick up as much right. stuff as I could. That was the reason... What I, that was what I was doing. So in that you mission. were focusing on. I was it. focusing on that. Okay, cool. Before cool. I went off and actually did yeah. the tower defense side of things. Yeah. Uh, if not for Destiny, I would probably already be looking towards this game. Uh, I might just give it uh, some more time, and uh, I'll probably end up picking it up. Cool. Also, I should probably mention because I have checked, Blizzard is responsible for the loot color coding. It started Ooh. with Diablo 2 and oh, World of Warcraft. Okay. Well, thank you for that, pal. Uh, right, so that's Fortnite. Um, that is by Epic Games and People Can Fly. Um, People Can Fly are a Polish company, pal. Man, there's more and more of them nowadays. <laughs> okay, we've got about five minutes left. So, Ewan, do you want to uh, squeeze something in? Well, I just kind of... Uh, there was something I wanted to bring up on our last video game episode because you were talking about uh, the sexy brutal and some of the aspects of what you were talking about kind of reminded me of this uh, PS2 game that I've spent the week sort of like digging trying to find I, I found it um, called Shadow Shadow of Memories uh, Shadow of Destiny in, uh, in the US I believe um, and it's basically a sort of adventure game in a 3D style so it's not quite like the point and click adventures of old where you just go into like a room or something like that it's you know you're, it's fully 3D and you can walk around this town but it's the same sort of style of thing where it's just mainly about character interactions and maybe finding certain item, key items and things like that. Um, but the premise of the, the story is it's, uh, it's a Japanese game, I should state it, made by Konami. Um, and it does that wonderful Japanese thing of just like weird fetishization <laughs> of kind of like European stuff. So it's set in Germany. I don't know, we all have butlers here. Oh yeah, of course, yeah. Hmm. Um, and it's set in this like small town called Le- Lebenbaum, Lebensbaum, I Leben, believe in the yeah. Lebensbaum in the uh, in the game. And you walk out of you're 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 leaving a diner bizarrely. And it's, it's, are there many German? Are there many diners in small German towns? I, ah, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about it. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. That that was really <laughs> bothering me. Um, and you're uh, you're murdered by by an act of stabbing, and you're immediately brought back by a homunculus. As you would, yeah. Who's like. Right, I'm going to keep bringing you back uh, until you've solved your murder, and allows you to travel through time to different um, eras, and it's all all within the same town. So certain things you might do uh, when you go back, you goes back as far as like the 1580s, and it's set in like 2000, year 2000. You go back to like 1980, and you meet different characters from different things. It all gets it's played across like there's an intro bit, and then there's like eight chapters, so it is quite linear it's not the sort of thing where the time skipping stuff is something you can muck about with too much but it does it does place certain limits on you so when you go back in time time is moving at the same 
rate as time in your present. So if you're not in your present when you're murdered, it bas- that's basically a game over. So you have to go back to the time, do what you need to do, and get back to your present to then be murdered for the whole thing to start again. <coughs> and it's um, that's, right. that's really weird. Uh, yeah, I, it's, it's I, quite, a really I quite odd, like that. Though. I, that sounds it's, really cool. And there's like I'm actually because I've been looking about to see you get hold of it. It's currently only available. I think. Well, I mean, obviously, if you've got an old PS2 and you can get hold of a copy of the game, then you know, go for it. Um, it is available on the PSP, which I think is all download only now, anyway. So uh, presumably there'll be some kind of port. Well, for some that. PS2 games are now popping up on PS4. I've picked up. Well, yeah, this two is one. Yeah, so they, they do have a. Uh, there's a thing on. What is it called? Is it PlayStation Now? Yeah. PlayStation Now, where you can basically stream old games. Yeah, I've oh, picked right, up. Aye. So I you might be able to find it on there. No, I had a look around for it because the other thing I thought is I may well just be knocking about on Steam because I, it's the PC version of it's been around for. I think because it took them a few years to get around to doing that and they did an Xbox port in like Europe only for some reason and then released a PC version of it. Which, as far as I know, is still knocking about because uh, I was assuming that you know Steam might have picked up or because they you know they've been doing a lot of that with old games yeah you know, they've gone through most of the I'm gonna have to have a look original PlayStation over but um, yeah it's, it's it's quite interesting I was actually like sort of reading through some of the plot points again and it was all kind of coming back to me and yeah it does get really complicated with the time thing and like certain characters you meet because well, I suppose of, if if uh, did you say it goes back to eighteen hundreds fifth Fifteen hundreds. Fifteen hundreds. You go to. So you being murdered, as a du- direct uh, has some link to yeah. Really, yeah. Uh, you must be an important person. Well, that's the thing. It, it's all it all kind of ties into itself, and it produces an interesting time travel story all right. as well. It, it, it probably might be considered cliche. You know, it follows certain tropes, but it, you know, it, it does it in an uh, interesting sounds way. Cool. Sounds and cool. it's not your run of the mill time have to travel look it up. thing. Worth a, worth a look. Um, if I can pick up a copy, I'll hopefully have some more chat about it. I get on eBay. Yeah, get a, a wee PC See copy. See if you can find it. One of those old ones you have to run it on DOS. <laughs> on a DOS great. box. Yeah. <laughs> right, thank you very much. That's uh, Sh- Shadow of Memories, but what was it called in Shadow, Shadow of Destiny? Of Dest- Shadow of Destiny. Yeah, so that's by uh, Konami yeah. and Entertainment Tokyo. Yeah. Probably well, they haven't ported that yet because they're too busy making fucking pachinko machines. Oh, probably. Because that's what Konami do now. There's apparently a, uh, like a bunch of people on GOG. Do you know GOG? Yeah. Uh, that, that are um, asking for this game to be Aye, well, picked I was up looking by for, GOG. Yeah, I was, that was where I saw it. it. was a forum on there and it was like, yeah, because they have like people will vote for certain games that haven't yeah. yet been done and that was one that was quite popular. Definitely has a bit of a following. Cool, right, okay, we're going to have to wrap up there. So that was uh, episode 61, first mailbag episode. Yeah, let's have some more. <laughs> Keep those coming. Um, we'll give out all our internet stuff, so our email address is firstplayertoken at gmail.com. That's F-I-R-S-T, player token. Uh, we are on Facebook, Twitter, SoundCloud, iTunes, YouTube. Uh, that's all first player token, or the large and unnecessary first player token. Um, our Twitter is at 1st player token. Once player token, you know, Fine. get it right. Get, you, do yourself a favour, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, you. Um, our website is firstplayertoken.com. We have a Discord, which is discord.me slash firstplayertoken. Um, my Twitch username is Unnecessary Chris. If you want to see me streaming some video games, and me and Dave are playing Starbound, and we're going to try and get the Wild Date set up, but Pavel keeps making excuses because he's playing Destiny 2. Um, is the Wild Date working now? Um, I believe they, they have patched it. They have patched it. So <laughs> You're going to find out. But hopefully, we'll will. find out, yeah. Uh, we have a PSN community if you want to find us on your PlayStation. Um, and we are part of the Podnos Network, <clears throat> the UK's leading entertainment podcast network. Thank you. Off there by itch my eye. Um, I'd, I'd ask you what's going on there, but we're running out of time. Well, so. I think we're probably. I think uh, no change. <laughs> no change. Thank you. <laughs> Podnos.com if you want to go and check out um, a whole bunch of podcasts. So that's it. We will be back next week with our board games episode. Um, until then, thanks for listening. Bye. 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 Bye.